Welcome to Chemistry. My name is Miss Rainey and I am so excited that you are joining me on AP Chemistry this year. This is our very first video in our very first unit, Chemical Foundations Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about matter, properties, changes, and methods of separation. Are you ready to get started? Let's go! So first we're going to talk about matter because chemistry is the study of matter. So matter is anything that has mass and takes up space, which really is anything. What can you think of? Your hands, your clothes, your books, the air, anything is matter. So we're going to take that very, very broad category and separate it into two smaller categories. First, we have mixtures and pure substances. So mixtures contain particles of more than one specific atom or molecule, and it contains substances with two or more substances physically combined. Two or more substances physically combined are mixtures. So then if we look at pure substances, pure substances contain particles of only one specific atom or molecule. So if there's more than one, type of atom, then they must be chemically combined. So the next thing we're going to do is take those two categories and split them down even further. We're going to start with mixtures and separate them into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, and then we'll go into pure substances and separate them into elements and compounds. So mixtures, again, contain particles of more than one specific atom or molecule. Particles of more than one molecule or more than one atom. So we're going to start with heterogeneous mixtures. Heterogeneous mixtures, the components are visually distinguishable, which means you can see the different parts. So what kind of examples of heterogeneous mixtures can you think of? I'm thinking um, Italian dressing. Mm, maybe concrete. Anything where you can see the different parts. And then we've got homogeneous mixtures. So as contrast, the components are visually indistinguishable. Let's see, G U I. Which means you cannot see the different parts. That's usually because these different parts are mixed uniformly throughout the entire thing. So let's go with sweet tea. In sweet tea, you cannot see the sugar apart from the tea apart from the water, you could see the ice. The ice would make it heterogeneous. So a homogeneous mixture could also be air. You can't see the nitrogen apart from the oxygen, apart from the water vapor, the carbon dioxide, the pollution. You might even have a solid that's a homogeneous mixture, such as steel, or even 14 karat gold is not pure gold. So all of these things are mixtures because they are physically combined atoms or molecules, not chemically combined. Next, we have pure substances. Pure substances contain particles of one specific atom or mo molecule. If there's more than one type of atom, they are chemically combined. So let's start over here with elements. And elements simply on the periodic table. Something like iron or lead or even, let's say, helium. Now, this also includes diatomic molecules, Hanoff Kolbe, so that would be uh, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, iodine. Those are all made of one specific type of element, so they are considered elements, even though there's two elements of the same type bonded together. So then we have compounds. And compounds have a chemical formula. 
and there's a very specific reason why they have a chemical formula. The chemical formula signifies that the atoms are chemically combined. So this could be something like water or carbon dioxide or sugar, sucrose. C6H1206 or C12H22011. Anything with a chemical formula is a compound because the chemical formula signifies that the atoms are chemically combined. So let's move on. Next we have properties. Properties of matter. There's qualities, distinctive features, or characteristic attributes of a thing. They're what help you tell one type of thing from another. So matter can be classified based on its physical properties or its chemical properties. So let's start with physical properties. Physical property is a property you can observe without changing the chemical composition. So that would be like um, color or size, or shape, or even boiling point. Because when you boil a liquid, it's still the same chemical structure, it's just now a gas instead of a liquid. So chemical properties can only be observed while changing or attempting to change the chemical composition of a substance. So a chemical property might be whether or not iron rusts, whether or not silver tarnishes. Silver tarnishes, that's a chemical property of silver. Iron rusts, that's a chemical property of iron. Uh, wood burns, that's a chemical property of wood. Metal doesn't burn. So the inability of a metal to catch fire is a, also a chemical property of a metal. All right, let's move on to changes. Changes make the form or appearance of something different from what it is or what it would be if it was left alone. So matter can undergo physical changes or chemical changes. Let's start with the physical. Physical changes are a change in the appearance of a substance that does not change its chemical composition. So that could be like cutting or breaking. Or earlier we said boiling point was a physical property because boiling something is a physical change. So a chemical change is a change in the chemical composition of a substance. So that could be like rusting or tarnishing. So the fact that iron rusts is a chemical property of iron. When iron does rust, that's a chemical change. Now one thing I do want to point out, a lot of elementary school teachers will tell you that a physical change is reversible. Let's see. and a chemical change is not reversible, which I do not agree with that at all. I do not believe that. Physical changes, some of them are not reversible. If you break a plane of, pane of glass, it would be very hard to reverse that. Whereas some chemical changes are reversible. It can go back and forth between the reactants and the products, even though it's an actual chemical change. So kind of get that out of your mind. Reversibility is not a hallmark of physical or chemical changes. 
Now, one thing you kind of want to do is be able to recognize whether something's a physical change or a chemical change. So you'll be able to recognize it if you see a color change. Then that's probably a chemical change. Or if it gives off gas or heat or light or precipitate. It's a fancy chemistry word for solid. If you see any of these things, that's a good idea that it's probably a chemical change. So if you mix two clear liquids together and it turns yellow, that is a color change and that's a chemical change. Or if you mix two liquids together and it turns into a solid, that is a precipitate form, so that's a chemical change. So those things are good indicators of whether chemical physical changes have occurred.